Hey guys, welcome to another uh, programming game in Visual Basic uh, tutorial. So this is the second lesson in the game programming uh, series and what I want you guys to do in this tutorial is to do some basic collision detection. And what that means is, uh, if you have a look from our previous program, you programmed a character to move around on the screen uh, based on the arrow keys. And what's going to happen now is I want it so that when I collide with the little blue picture here, when my character collides with that, it's going to reset my character position to the top left but only after I collide with the blue gem. So let's have a look. So anywhere else it's fine, but as soon as I hit the blue thing, I go back to the top left. So it's a pretty cool little feature that requires you to program collision detection into the game. So now we're going to talk about how to do that. So basically, the rest of the coding is the same as the last program, but uh, what I want to add in now is a function, a function which you're going to program yourself called collision. And basically what this function does is you're going to give the function two objects as input. So inside the bracket here are the input variables the first one is object one the second one is object two make sure you use the by val uh, uh, declaration uh, so that uh, so that the actual object is not passed to the function it's just the value inside the object so uh, by val object one as object object two as object make sure you put them inside the function the output is a boolean uh, value so the output is either going to be true or false okay now inside the function i'm going to declare a variable called collided and originally it is false now we're going to evaluate if the two objects are colliding. Evaluate whether they're colliding and uh, it's going to be pretty hard to explain how this code evaluates whether they're colliding or not but I'm going to give it my best shot. So object one dot top right this property of object one gives you the uh, value for the top uh, boundary of your object. So for example right now my uh, picture here my boy object is located at 150 sorry 132 for the top value the Y value. Now if I move this thing up a little bit you'll see the Y value changes to 84 so this is the upper boundary of the uh, of the object so in this code here object one dot top refers to that number 130 or well, 110 right now that is the top boundary of my object object one dot height refers to the height of this object, so the length from here to here. Now, if object one dot top plus object one dot height, so which means this number here, which is 132, sorry, 147 right now, because I just moved it again, plus the height of the object, which is uh, uh, 76. Actually, let's try if it's still 76, if I move this, if I shrink that. 52, yep. Yeah. So the height of the object is the second number here in the size. So 
if 157 which is the hot which is the top variable top property plus 76 which is the height of the uh, object is bigger than or equal to object 2 dot top so remember if you move the object down the height will actually increase I know that is different to how you've been taught in maths where up is positive down is negative here down is actually bigger so down is actually positive so I'm moving my object I'm checking whether the, the top boundary plus the height of the object has a higher value bigger value than the top boundary of my box so what that means is right now it's not going to connect it's not going to collide it's not going to collide but as soon as the top boundary plus the height which means this coordinate is bigger than the top uh, boundary of the blue object then it collides so similarly you're going to program the same thing for when uh, the blue object touches the the black object sorry the gem touches the boy from the top and you're gonna program the same thing for when it comes in from the left and when it comes in from the right so that's why there is uh, four lines of code and uh, basically when that you can see the end connector used here and what that means is when all of these are true then the collision is happening right because you can't just have one of them true otherwise when the character moves down it's not even going to collide with the blue gem but when the vertical values are are bigger than the blue object it's going to come up as colliding so that's why you have to have an end uh, connector here connecting all four things saying that when they're definitely colliding uh, so when they're definitely overlapping then we're going to say collided is true and this function is going to return whatever the collision detection result is whether it's true or false so if it's true then we know they have collided so I'm gonna run the function every time the timer kick uh, the timer ticks so here's a timer uh, here's a code for the timer whenever it ticks so other than moving the object around uh, as we've set up already I'm gonna add in the fifth statement which says that if the two things are colliding so collision I'm running I'm calling the function if the collision between boy and gem uh, is true then I'm gonna reset the position of my boy object uh, back to the top left hand corner so the top boundary is zero the left boundary uh, coordinate is zero so basically all the new code that's happening in this tutorial is the calling the collision function and uh, and uh, writing the function for the collision and obviously you need to put in the blue gem uh, into the game as well so confirm that you can get this happening so basically you can still move your character around as soon as it hits the blue object it resets back to the top position okay once you get that happening uh, you have completed this tutorial thanks for watching see you next time